Good evening. <clears throat> Excuse me. I'd like to call to order the Village of Gurney Planning and Zoning Board for this Wednesday, November 2nd, 2022. Could we have a vote? Roll call, please. Present. Present. Here. 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 Present. We do have a quorum. <clears throat> Excuse me. If everyone would please join, uh, stand and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. Um, before we get to the regular part of the agenda, um, it's, a, it's my understanding that some of you may be here to voice concerns about the Trans Chicago project that we discussed at our last meeting. And we've already had our public comment and have voted and <coughs> sent our recommendation to the village board on that. We will not be opening the floor to the public for that matter. Um, it's my understanding that the village board is scheduled to address it November 28th? Yeah, on November 28th. So basically there was a hearing at the last plan commission uh, meeting and uh, that was properly noticed and that was an opportunity for um, both the applicant and anyone else wanting to attend to be part of that public record. Once that work is done, this board's work is finished at that point and now it will go to the village board, which it's my understanding is currently scheduled for the November 28th meeting. At that time, public comment will be opened up and because uh, uh, these folks no longer have any role to play, uh, they either made their recommendation or not recommendations, they took all their votes. They're just a recommending body. They don't have the final authority. The village board has the final authority. And so it's my understanding that um, that will take place on November 28th and everyone, if you're, if you're here exclusively, we have another matter that's an agenda item uh, that the village will be taking testimony on and making that decision. But once this board acts, uh, then the matter is elevated to the village board and that is the proper venue to make any further comments. And I, I see there's a couple questions, so I'd be glad to answer. Uh, yes, there is a there there is another. Yes, you could. You absolutely can at that. That's a good point. Um, we do have a meet, there is a village board meeting in between, and and uh, you could certainly uh, raise points at that time because that's now in front of the body that will be making that decision. So uh, certainly that's available to anyone. Well, again, you can speak to that, but since it's no longer at this board level, the people that you have to uh, talk to would be the village board members, not these folks, because their work is done, and so now you have to go to the village board. Right, and 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 you know, I, I can understand maybe uh, folks didn't know that, but it is not an agenda item, nor is it slated to become an agenda item at this level now. So uh, definitely if you have those concerns, you could attend either the very next village board meeting. I, it's my understanding it's not gonna be an agenda item, but there is certainly public comment at that time and you could submit. And you know, for that matter, I can tell you that if you have any submissions to, make, to be made that you want to provide to the uh, village trustees and to the mayor, uh, it is the general practice to accept that and include that in the packet for the trustees to consider. So submissions are something that uh, uh, can be received and they can be presented uh, to the people that will be deciding that issue. Yeah, and uh, just to amplify something that, that Mr. Winter mentioned before, uh, the Planning and Zoning Board, we made a recommendation to the Village Board. We did not approve anything. So the, the final approval rests with the Village Board.
Okay, well, uh, we're, we're getting I, really. I can just respond quickly okay. to that. So there is a state statute <coughs> that whenever there's a special <coughs> use, and so the state statute was uh, was complied with. Well, well, it's also my understanding that the state statute. Okay. Yeah. Well. The, well, the sign. So the sign isn't the uh, is only one of the requirements. There was written notification to um, properties that were adjacent to that. Again. I can't debate with you what what the state statute should say. I know what it I know what it says, and I understand uh, you know, your point. But I can just tell you that at this point, um, it is now at the village board, and you can make that same comment to the village board. No, I'm not. I'm I'm the village I'm the village attorney. So again, that's not something that's before this group. They do have, I'm, I'm sure you're gonna be respectful to the fact that there is one agenda item tonight. And so the board's gonna focus on that tonight. You're certainly uh, welcome to listen to that public hearing, but uh, just for clarification, did not want you to wait thinking that an, op an additional opportunity would be given. You should just go come back to the village board. Right, my understanding is, uh, and you can always check with, uh, with that agenda, but I'm quite certain, and maybe staff can confirm that for me. It is the decision, it is set as an action item on the 28th. You can come to the prior meeting and, just, and uh, make comment at the public uh, comment portion of that meeting. You're welcome to do that, okay? So uh, thanks for coming out. We'll be, I'll turn it back over to you, Jim. Great, great. <laughs> and, and just just for a point of clarification, the public comment portion of the Village Board's agenda is typically toward the end of the meeting. Uh, it's typically toward the end of the meeting. There's an opportunity for general public comment at every Village Board meeting. Can I, can I just say one thing before anybody leaves? Um, it, the matter is tentatively set for the 28th of November. The agendas aren't set until the Wednesday before that Monday meeting. We have, uh, we being staff are trying to get the reports and the ordinances ready for that meeting. But again, it's best for you to call, you know, sometime that week before, <coughs> just to make sure that it's actually on that agenda on the 28th. I'm pretty certain it will be, but never say never. So something might happen and I just want you to be prepared. So. It's always best just to call or to check the website um, just to make sure what the agenda says. Again, it will be posted, generally it's posted Wednesday or Thursday right before that Monday meeting. And uh, just as a reminder, that meeting actually starts at 7 p.m., not 7.30. And uh, as uh, the chair has indicated, public comment is toward the end, but it just depends on the number of items as to when uh, that item or when, when that um, agenda item will be reached. So well, so yeah, I, I'm not going to pursue any fees in that, but I mean, typically speaking, if you have any information on that topic, you can submit that. Um, and uh, I would say, say uh, from a general proposition, because of the <coughs> village's experience um, you know, with prior uh, ear monitoring, um, I would, you know, I, I don't know exactly what you're referring to because testing of EPA and air quality is um, very complicated. Yeah, but so I would read that carefully because certainly, you know, there are aspects to, I can tell you that the village cannot regulate 
truck traffic on public and county highways. That's ICC, that's interstate commerce. And so uh, I, I don't know specifically what you're talking about. And so at this point, I would just say, if there's any information that you would like to pre present to the village, please do that. Uh, in general, air quality and measuring air quality is quite involved. And if I can, if I can offer one other re resource, um, when matters like this um, come before us and come before the village board, there's there's also there's often a lot of speculation and sometimes just frank, frankly, not incorrect information out there. I would encourage you, if you haven't done so already, to either go to the village website or, or go through YouTube and view the recording of the meeting that was held by this body. Uh, what was that exact date? I'm sorry? What was the date of our meeting? I forgot. The 14th. The 14th of, of October? October 14th. October 14th. So if you go to YouTube and okay. search October 14th, Village of Gurney Planning and Zoning Board meeting, um, you can watch the whole meeting. I think it was the 12th, wasn't it? It was the second. Uh, was it, it, was, the it was the 12th? <laughs> it was the 12th. It was the 12th. It was okay. the 12th. Okay. Sorry about that. With the, the, with the applicant? Yes, the applicant. Ab absolutely. It was an official planning and zoning board meeting. Um, it was a public hearing. Everybody was sworn in. It was sworn testimony. And we made our recommendation based on the, the facts that were placed before us. All that stuff was discussed. It was a public meeting, just like we're having right now, or public hearing, I should say, and all the facts, a, pre a presentation was made by the petitioner. Um, we had the opportunity to ask questions. There were members of the public that were in attendance, and they had the opportunity to ask questions. Um, we addressed all their questions the best that we could. And um, at the end of the evening, um, made our recommendation. Well, I, I, again, just rest assured, there was no limitation placed on anyone. If they now, I understand what you've said that you were unaware of the meeting. However, I just want to let you know, those that were in attendance, there was no limitations placed on on anyone. They that happened to be there. And uh, like I say, it sounds like you're going to um, attend a village board meeting where the matter is currently in front of and address those issues further. There's nothing further that this board can do at this time. No, so, I, so it's a deliberative process. It, it is uh, at the board level because now we're done with this. So each board member uh, uh, would make their decision and uh, they make their decision on uh, facts that are presented. And certainly you've indicated tonight that you wanna um, provide some facts on that and that's what they'll uh, make their decisions on. Certainly when it comes to opinions, everyone has different opinions. Um, in the end, un in terms of the legal standing of matters, uh, the record, uh, the village will want to make a decision uh, <coughs> based on uh, factual findings uh, that um, are based on the, uh, the evidence that has been presented. Well, you know, that's, again, that's something that uh, you can um, bring up at the meeting, and I'm sure that I, past practices you know, there's been opportunities, you know, to uh, discuss those very issues. Right, you mentioned that at the last village board meeting because we were both there.
Okay, okay sir, I, I'm going to have to ask you to please um, discont discontinue because we still, we're not. Because we, we do have an agenda. So uh, yeah, thank you for your comments. I, I see there's one last question. One very brief question. Thank you for your forbearance in listening to us. Yes. I have two questions. How long did you have the material from Trans Chicago? And by show of hands, could I see any of you who looked at their actual sites, which are available on their website? Okay. So those, uh, you can certainly, because these are not the final decision makers of that, you can certainly present that if there is I a hearing know on that. What facts they used. I heard earlier that you got the materials, you debated <coughs> it at one meeting, and you voted to change the zoning. So I ask two questions. When did this board get the materials? And have any of you, by show of hands, actually looked on site at the Trans Chicago website to see what their repair yards and truck sales actually look like? So I think we can answer uh, because it's universal. The board gets the packet um, generally. On this this panel gets the packet that they would consider. Um, generally on the Friday preceding the meeting day. So That's when they would have... Six days. Well, it's, it's that... Generally. It, it's, they get the packet on Friday. I, I just want to be factual. You can... And then the meeting was on Wednesday. Okay. In, terms, in terms of... Um, uh, uh, and again, uh, that, that information is considered, and that is for certain that that, that information is distributed to the uh, board members. How many of the board members looked, you got materials from Trans Chicago. I'm trying to determine factually how many of the board members actually in that five day time frame took an opportunity to go on site and look at what their sites, their repair sites and their truck sales actually looked like. Okay, so you can, you can, re you can reserve that question and ask that of the board members Okay. You guys like, voted. You're here. You made the record. Yeah, I. You're here. I know, but this, this is not a. Uh, typically, because this is not a public hearing, this isn't an opportunity to ask any question that you might think is relevant. And I'm not saying that it isn't relevant. I'm just saying that's not the purpose uh, that we're being here. So and, the board is determining to hide behind procedure. No, the board isn't determining the higher, uh, okay. the hide behind procedure. Yes, it is, it's, sir. Well, it, that may be your opinion, but the information that they consider, you can rest assured that it was within the packet. If, for instance, you want to make sure that they Thank see you. something that's posted on a website, you can submit that to the village, and then you can know that that's part of the packet. The one thing that I want to avoid is you getting the misinterpretation that because you've made some broad reference to websites to Chicago Transit, mm -hmm. what does that really mean to the commissioners? So again, I have to tell you at this point, I know we disagree on this point. You think that you should be able to pull this board member, these board members tonight about that specific information. What I'm submitting to you is that you can do that to the village board because it's at their level. If you want to do that, you can do that. Thank you. I'm not, I'm not prohibiting you from doing that. Okay, w once again, the, the meeting was held on October 12th, and can, you can find it on YouTube to, to, to hear the test. Yes, 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 just call and make an appointment with staff. It was in the letter that went out. It's at also a copy of it's at the public library. Thank you. Yes, sir. Again, it's, it's, so, I mean, uh, basically, state law says that we have to go out 250 feet. We go out 500 feet. We can certainly check the um, list of property owners if you recently purchased, if it's in a trust, if it's, you know, if you're beyond 500 feet, you won't get a notice. So maybe you thought you got. 
We yep. also did have some return back to us, so that's a possibility, like a return to sender. They weren't able to deliver. So if you want to get in contact with me, my name's Clara right. Gable. Um, if you want to come into Village Hall or I can give you my direct line, I, we can figure out what happened. So it would be 500 feet from the property line. It may not, that property line, you have to understand that there's a right of way there. So if you happen to be you know, interior a greater distance, you may think in your mind that you're within 500 feet. They do make that calculation very precisely. And again, just to let you know, this village actually extends that distance doubles it because the state statute only requires up to 200 feet. I do represent some other villages that don't do that. Journey does go out 500 feet. I'm not aware, are you talking about the applicant? Uh, whether the applicant, whether the applicant had meetings with some homeowners association, that's not, I, I, that's not what the village doesn't make those arrangements. So I don't know what they, what homeowners. But the letters would have went to any spinny run residents within 500 feet. Thank you for your patience, everyone. Um, next item on the agenda um, is the um, approval of our meeting schedule for calendar year 2023. Um, one thing I did of note is April 5th, uh, Passover begins at sundown on April 5th. Um, traditionally, we have not scheduled planning and zoning board meetings on, on Jewish holidays. Um, uh, I'd like to make a suggestion since that uh, the month of March has five Wednesdays in it that um, that we schedule um, um, a makeup for April 5th on um, May March 29th. That way we don't have two meetings in a row in the month of, of April. Tr oftentimes we've just had, it, it would have been on April 12th instead of the 5th and then we have back to back weeks. But if we use take advantage of the extra week in March, uh, we can spread them out a little bit. Do we know what week spring break is for schools? It's usually- Sometimes um, it can get a little difficult that fourth week in, fourth, fifth week, whatever, and that end of March can get difficult, so. Um, just, yeah, something we have done in the past is we've just scheduled one meeting in a certain month and we've um, called a meeting if we've needed it. So that's another option as well. And we can also we can always cancel it. Yeah, that's it. fine. We can do that. Okay. So I, I so I propose that we schedule one on March 29th. Does anybody else have any questions or suggestions about the calendar? Oh. In spring break. In spring break. We can go ahead and schedule it that week, and then if if you know we have an issue, then we can cancel it, like you said. Or yeah, I mean, what chances are is if, if if it's an issue for someone that's making a petition, they they won't correct they correct use that meeting. So so it'd be uh, so the board, if if that's what you like to do, and you just have to present the um, motion, and if they choose to schedule it and amend it in the second week of March, then that's fine. That would be fine. So any other discussion on? Meeting schedule. If not, a motion to approve as amend as suggested amendment. Or is that anybody? Or Todd? Todd? Second by second. Second by jo Josh. All in favor, say aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you. Um, next item on the agenda is a is a public hearing um, for a rezoning of the properties. Two properties that are located at 963 and 975 Bell Plain Avenue. So Bogomel and <coughs> Bitha <coughs> Gankars are requesting a zoning map amendment to rezone approximately 0.5 acres located at 963 and 975 Bell Plain Avenue 
from R3 single family residential district to R4 two family residential district. The petitioner has indicated the request is being made to allow the construction of a two family dwelling on each of the lots. Two family dwellings or duplexes cannot be built on the lots as currently zoned R3. The subject lots are surrounded by R3 single family zone properties to the north, south, and west and P public lands zone property to the east. The nearest R4 zone properties are in the block to the south of the subject properties. The applicant is in attendance to present their request and on this matter, the planning and zoning board will make a recommendation that will be forwarded to the village board for their determination. Thank you. Um, as this particular item is a public hearing, I would request anybody from the petitioner or members of the general public who intend to ask questions, make testimony or make comment to please stand or be sworn in by the village attorney. So if you could stand and raise your right hand, even if you think you're not sure whether you're going to uh, participate in the hearing, it's probably easiest to stand at this time and raise your right hand and swear everyone at the same time. Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth and nothing but the truth? Okay, you then you can now be seated. And I'll turn it back to you, sir. Thank you. Um, for those of you who have not been to one of our meetings before, um, the, the procedures are fairly straightforward. Um, <coughs> I'll initially turn the, flo the floor over to the petitioner. Um, they will make a presentation to the Planning and Zoning Board. We will have a round of questions that we will address to the petitioner. Um, after we've had our first round of questions and comments, I'll open the floor to the public, at which time any member of the public who uh, would like to ask a question or make a comment um, would, would be required to approach the microphone um, at all times, uh, whether it's petitioner or members of the public. Um, when you first get to the microphone, please clearly state your name and address for the record. Once we've heard all the questions from the, mem from the members of the general public, I will close the floor of the public and then we will answer the questions um, and then we will then go into our final round of deliberation before making a recommendation to the village board. Okay. So uh, at this time, we'll turn the floor over to the petitioners. So if you can use the microphone in the center, center of the room. Good evening. Uh, my name is Eric Jarok. I'm a representative of the owner. Uh, so as- uh, Could you state your address, please? I'm a representative of the owner. Do you have a business address that you could provide? Uh, business address, yeah. Uh, 125 East Lake Street, uh, Bloomingdale, Illinois. So, uh, as mentioned before, uh, uh, there are two uh, adjacent lots uh, that we are proposing. Uh, we are asking for a, a zoning change to R4 from R3. Uh, the over overall goal is to allow uh, for more uh, uh, density housing, like uh, was mentioned, uh, two units, two duplex units on each lot. Um, Uh, just going through the to the application. Uh, as we mentioned, uh, there's a adjacent R4 uh, zoning already in place. Uh, we have reviewed the comprehensive plan of the village of Gurney. Uh, it, it it suggests that there's gonna be a higher density in that area, and, and that's the overall plan of the village. Um, it's not shown on the map, but we are very close to the commercial. Uh, there's Grand Avenue right there. Uh, so basically, uh, it will allow uh, for more dense areas to utilize the already existing businesses along the, along the Grand Avenue. As, as I mentioned, the, uh, the proposed ch zoning change is consistent with the uh, proposed medium density housing uh, land use. Um, these are just vacant lots along along that Bell Plain Avenue, so that's will that will promote the development of this area. essentially just providing more more um, uh, 
additional housing units within, within that commercial uh, corridor right there. I would say that that would be, that would be it. One other request, uh, just to make sure that we get spelling and everything correct. There's a sign-in sheet on the table behind you. Sure. Mm -hmm. um, so is there any other presentation? No. Okay. Um. And just one note on the spelling really quickly. Um, in the notes, I believe the name Bogomo was misspelled. So for the motion, just to um, make sure that we use the correct name for that, and I apologize for that. Okay, thanks, Carla. Um, one observation that I have, when, when I think in terms of conventional land, pl land planning theories, um, multifamily housing is typically seen as a transitional zone between a commercial, a non-residential district, typically commercial, and um, um, single-family homes. Um, um, in, in my mind, I'm, I'm, I'm a little troubled that this really doesn't fit that particular model, and um, that's that's my comment for you right now for what it's worth. Um, Kevin? Uh, I agree. Um, if it applies to these lots that they can be rezoned to R4, I don't see any other lot in that entire subdivision that couldn't be or couldn't request uh, zoning to R4 also. There's nothing unique about these two pieces of property other than they back up to a park, but that doesn't give uh, the indication that it should be set up as R4. So that's that's my, my take on it. Josh? Is there any proposal of exactly what's gonna be built there or, or I don't know if this is a question for us to say, can they build a threeplex or a fourplex on, or is it just zoned for a duplex? Um, Maximum is duplex. Maximum, okay. The, uh, then w do we have any proposal from the petitioner of what it will look like or what the site plans, what you have in mind no. to build there? This is a rezoning, you can't, yeah, you okay. can't look at. So if it was something that they were doing as a development, okay. there are certain okay. requests, but this is because the zoning, it flips and so uh, it, provided they comply with the bulk standard, they may never, you know, they would be subject to multiple building permit. Okay, so that makes sense. Get, get, good get, good get, question, but I just, get, yeah. for clarification. Sometimes we see a lot of that. Right, you do yeah. see a lot of that. Okay. Uh, this does not happen to be one of those instances. Because okay. the danger is that they present a concept that looks really, really cool and they change their mind and something else that for subsequent ownership sure. has a different vision and it may or may not yeah. be consistent. Yeah. Alex? Uh, just looking at the property, it, it doesn't conform with, you know, the duplex is just, the whole neighborhood is just totally different. Mm -hmm. You know, you have single family homes and you put a duplex, two duplexes there. I don't think it fits within the community at all. Anyone else? Um, one of the considerations for an amendment is um, the question of how will this benefit the needs of the community? Can you talk a little bit about how this will benefit having a, you know, currently sown a single family versus two family residence? Right, so like, like I mentioned before, your comprehensive plan predicts that it's gonna be three plus units this area in 2040, right? So essentially what we are asking for is that it, it's gonna happen, that, that's your goal as a village. And, and, and that being said, you, are, you have in mind that you will have to provide more housing units and, and you have already, you know, in, in that plan, it's already written down that this is what it's gonna, that area will be. And, and it makes a lot of sense because yes, it's, well, yes, our, our the two lots are, are maybe a little bit apart from the existing R4 district that's already there, but, but you have to look at it as we are just a block away from Grand Avenue. Uh, this is progress. You, you know there's gonna be more commercial along Grand Avenue and 
the way to promote th these businesses, you need to bring more people in there, and, and that's the natural state that this will be buffer between the R3s, you know, further up, but if you look at overall, you know, zoning map, this is already happening. Uh, you will have R4 in between that R3s at some point, and, and even in that comprehensive plan, you understand that, and it's, it's right there, that this is gonna be a three plus uh, 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 area with, with dwelling units. So it's gonna be multifamily. Uh, we are pro proposing duplexes, but down the road, we know for a fact, it's gonna be full of townhouses. I mean, that's, that's how it happens along the major roads because you have so much, you invest in your public transportation and, and, and you do the commercial stuff just because there's greater density that can actually use those, those amenities that are right there. It's you know, where, where you see the red, that's where Grand Avenue is. I, I went by and um, you say it's real close to the commercial area, but it is, well, from what I saw, it's not that close. And I, I agree with uh, the other members of uh, the uh, board that um, the, the style, it, it wouldn't, it wouldn't uh, conform to the style, the current style of the, the residences. I agree totally, but like I said, you look at your comprehensive plan and, and you're going that road anyways. You know, mm. as a point of order, I think the staff and I could uh, provide some background to this particular plan. These standards are uh, applicable to a 200 house subdivision that's on 80 acres, 40 acres. And so in some instances with more properties being uh, developed, you might find, you know, if there was an actual shortage in housing and you can make the argument that adding 400 more housing units that might be persuasive. Um, that should also be considered in terms of the comprehensive plan. The comprehensive plan isn't providing a plan for each indiv individual lot within a block. It is a general area. And what's been cited is that some of those properties already in that general area are duplexes and they acknowledge that. But uh, just to say that, and I'm not saying that, I understand what the petitioners just to understand the comprehensive plan wasn't the design to give necessarily a basis for two particular lots in this area, but the more broader area. So I think we're all agreed on that. And I think the petitioner uh, is acknowledging that um, there are some R4 in this area, but I think the map clearly indicates that it is, it is farther south. Mm -hmm. And I would also just add that the comprehensive land use plan provides a range between three and eight dwelling units for this area. Um, the proposed R4 would be right at that eight, so it would be right at the upper limit. Um, currently, as zoned for R3, it's a little over four, so it's still in that range. It, the comprehensive land use plan is not saying that this is going to be multifamily. It gives a range. And you have to take a look at the standards for rezoning. Comprehensive land use plan is just one. It's also the surrounding land uses and the surrounding zoning. So I'll just put that out there for consideration. And, and also it is presently zoned R3, which does not allow. That's, yeah, that's the consideration of the existing surrounding zoning and land uses. And of course that takes into consideration the very size of the lots being proposed because uh, that matrix is based on dwelling units per acre. So, you know, obviously larger lots sometimes could accommodate uh, more bigger uh, footprint and, it, and, and the density would increase even though it is a higher usage uh, dwelling. But if, there's, if the spread over a much greater number of properties, uh, that affects that range. But just to mention, we will still, you know, within the areas we have, we we fit within our four. Right, for the we can build for the minimum for the minimum for the minimum areas, areas and everything. So so the lot complies. You know, we can do whatever. Is, but we're is but we're all agreed that the density is eight per acre, correct? 
with the dimensions of these three rocks? I, I wouldn't know. Uh, these two lots are about a half an acre. Oh, so yeah, so uh, two lots together are about a half an acre. So you have four units on a half an acre. That would be eight units to the acre. Okay. All right, so it's still. I agree. I mean, I drove. I drove the sites. I agree that uh, I don't see the the, the necess uh, necessity to rezone. I drove the site, and as you're coming off of Grand Avenue, there is that transition where there is R4, and then there is a break, and then you see the R3. And there are also some families on both sides. I just drove all the way down to see if there was an additional transition going in, you know, or fill in going down, and, and it was not. Uh, certainly going west. And into that neighborhood, it it does the same thing again, where there's a transition from uh, uh, R4 into the R3. Um, so I, I I think it's consistent with that plan. Thank you. All right. <coughs> Excuse me. At this time, I'll open the floor to the public. Um, as I mentioned before, please come to the microphone, um, uh, state your name and address uh, for the record, and if you can also please use the sign-in sheet on the table. Um, address your questions to us, and once everyone has had an opportunity to ask a question, um, I'll close the floor to the public. My name is Michael Petru. Uh, I reside at 939 Belle Plaine, so I'm just to the right of the P there on Belle Plaine on the map. Um, and I appreciate the opportunity to make this statement. Uh, I became very familiar with the Compass 2040 Comprehensive Plan, um, and I, I pulled this quote from there, uh, the East Grand Gateway is a commercial area that has not seen the same level of investment as other areas in the village over the past few decades. The corridor's older building stock produces low real retail rents and declining property values. I certainly agree that that's an issue. Uh, and uh, now I recognize that is referring specifically to the retail corridor, but I would argue that the best way to induce business is to build a community of long-term owners and people who are personally invested in the neighborhood. And this is already made difficult in this particular block with the busy Belle Plaine Avenue running down the middle. And yet, two-family homes in Gurney are a majority renter-occupied rather than owner-occupied. And the average tenancy of a renter in a multifamily unit in the U.S. is only two and a half years. Uh, the report also notes that Gurney's population has stabilized in the last 20 years and has slightly declined, actually, since the 2020 census. And Gurney housing stock has a relatively low vacancy rate, uh, but also a relatively low share of cost bur burdened residents. There does not seem to be a population that is eager to fill this space that has sat empty for so many years. Um, so this rezoning to me seems like a solution in, in search of a problem. Building two initial additional units by themselves won't achieve any of the goals laid out in the plan, but will exacerbate existing issues within the community like overcrowded bus routes. And uh, I do have a a statement from the uh, District 56 website here where they talk about difficulties, uh, staffing shortages, especially with, with bus routes. Um, uh, traffic on Belle Plaine and parking shortages that are due to the inability of anybody to street park there. Now, I want to be clear that I'm not against multifamily housing, uh, having lived in it myself for nearly half of my life. And I agree that housing diversity can be beneficial, even in a, a village that has historically seen low density single family construction as core to its identity. But I would urge that these developments be more thoughtfully planned to integrate them into the community with the necessary infrastructure in place to support them and with an eye towards providing a benefit to those residents who have been there for years or decades. An, an example of this I could point to would be the, if you've seen the beautiful developments uh, in Vernon Hills around uh, Milwaukee and, and Town Line Road. Uh, I would prefer that rather than them being shoehorned into an open lot just because it's available. And that serves only to change the character of the neighborhood and, and cut neighbors off from one another. And I did want to say specifically, although it was touched on uh, by some of the board members, that when I mentioned the character of the neighborhood, there have been four cons new construction homes in the 900 block of Belle Plaine in the last 20 years, all of which were single family homes, including ours. And there are no, as you've mentioned, R4 zones on that entire length of Belle Plaine north of Grandview or in any of the surrounding blocks north of Grandview. So it, 
it really uh, feels out of place, and I'd like to oppose. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Anyone else? My name is Becky Kutsinas, and I live at 907 Belle Plaine Avenue. I would like to address the first of the, the eight on the village plan, the compatibility with the existing use and zoning of nearby property. I would just like to say I agree with what the board members have said. I put together a spreadsheet of nine um, residences on the 900 block of Belle Plaine. Th these are all homes with um, families. Uh, and they are all single family, um, and that would be the surrounding the 963, 975. So in addition to, thank you for those of you who drove down it, um, but I would just like to submit that into the record that all one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine residences are single family. So I put together a spreadsheet for you thank you for your time and thank you for your support thank you and if you could please sign the, the sheet there and we'll get it. any other comments or questions go ahead uh, good evening thank you for your time my name is marjorie stuckwish i'm a resident in um, gurney off of Belle Plaine for the last 12 years my husband and I and our two children um, I'd like to address the number three point on the rezoning petition um, does this rezoning benefit the public safety welfare and um, best interest of the community so um, as far as public safety goes that Bell Plain Street is part of the main bus route to Spalding Elementary School Spalding is straight down Bell Plain um, so there is a lot of um, bus traffic going through there and there is uh, already a problem with speeding and traffic violations and heavy traffic going down that street um, making unsafe conditions for the bus stops and bus routes one of which is right in front of our house and creating more high density housing in the area does not seem to meet the um, community's best interest or public safety um, as far as welfare goes there is already as Mike mentioned a, a bus school bus shortage for the district the D56 um, the district and um, the weekly communication from the school district, the most recent one, again, restated um, the problems with the school bus shortage and that they are um, potentially going to have to consolidate and even eliminate uh, routes at this point. So again, high-density housing does not seem to be in the benefit of the community. Um, I question the lot owner's investment in the community. I mean. I'm not being here tonight, I think speaks to that. Um, as well as uh, we, uh, my husband and I have observed the lot owners dumping large amounts of waste and yard waste, logs and cut down trees on the properties in question, on the properties and behind the fence line into the public areas, that park area, as well as the third vacant lot next to it. And I have pictures of it that I could um, show you. It's visible from the street um, as well as like um, from other properties. So um, that's what I'd like to say about that. Thank you so much for your time. Again, if you could please sign the to close the floor to the public. Um, I don't think I really heard any specific questions that, that we need to, to answer. Um, with regard to the observation of some possible code enforcement issues, I would encourage you to contact staff about that.
assessment, as is always the case, when an applicant makes an application, it is appropriate for the board to make a motion um, uh, in the affirmative saying, okay, you made this application, so we'll make the motion in the affirmative to approve it. However, if you don't agree with the request, you would then vote no. But we can't, we can't advance a negative statement. We can advance what the applicant has requested, and if it gets a negative vote, then that negative vote gets reported to the board. So just to understand um, the process, um, so uh, uh, we always start with a motion uh, following up the request. Framing the, the motion in the affirmative. Um, so if you're at that point, Thank you for that you understand that. Thank you for that clarification. Any other questions or comments from members of the Planning and Zoning Board? I, I noticed go ahead, Todd. In, the, uh, in the packet we got, the staff felt that we might be setting a precedent if we changed it from R3 to R4 and by spot zoning, changing the zoning. Would, would the staff like to elaborate on that anymore? Or? Well, I think uh, uh, basically, questions have been uh, appropriate. What you're trying to do is, is for any rezoning, you have to balance the existing uses and see whether you know, there's a request that's respectful to the already vested rights of the existing assets. So that's really significant. Obviously, the smaller the parcel becomes, um, as you know, it becomes you know, more contentious on that aspect. And so I previously mentioned patterns of development, that usually is looking at a larger area than just two lots. That does occur probably most likely when it is truly a transitional lot. You know, the, the, the applicant has indicated that in their view, this is a transitional lot, um, but each board member would have to make their own assessment as to whether they concur with that or not. You obviously, as the board, is looking at the map to see what is in the picture. In terms of, um, uh, and so that's the decision that you made at that point. I, I could add my comment on that one. Um, I don't see anything unique or compelling about these two parcels that would um, give me a compelling reason to um, be in favor of, of this sort of request. Um, in my definition of transitional, transitional occurs when you're directly adjacent to something. And this is kind of hopscotch. There's nothing directly adjacent to it in terms of other R4 properties. There are other R4 properties in the area, I'll grant you that, but, but the nearest ones are like a, a city block away. And in, in my mind, that's a pretty substantial difference. So, okay. Anyone else have any other comments? Not, um, as Brian indicated, um, a, a motion in the affirmative would be in order. Um, and then we would vote um, by consensus of our, our recommendations to go to the board of approval. Motion. Um, motion to forward a favorable recommendation on the petition of Bog, I'm sorry, Bogmick and Fiera are for a zoning map amendment to rezone property located at 963 and 975 Belle Plaine Avenue from R3 single family residential district to R4 two family residential district. Okay. Again, excuse me, uh, any discussion? Roll call, please. Nay. No. Nay. 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 Um, motion fails. Um, as was previously indicated, um, the Planning and Zoning Board is a, a recommending body to the Village <coughs> Board. Um, staff will uh, let you know when this matter will um, go before the Village Board for, for their consideration um, in the event you desire to try to pursue this. Um, our next meeting is scheduled for November 16th. It's my understanding that we do have at least one public hearing, so we are planning on having a meeting. I will now open the floor 
to the public for comments uh, um, for anything other than what was on this evening's agenda. There being none, I'll close the floor of the public. A motion to adjourn. Um, just get it. You need to watch the website. Not for this one. There's no public hearing notice requirement. So if you want to stay in contact with me, um, I can let you know when it is scheduled. Sure, I got it. Thank you. Okay. There's a um, every every Friday the village sends out a, a weekly update thing, and on that um, it indicates when the upcoming meetings are going to be. And there's a hyperlink on it all the time that will take you right to the agenda uh, for our meetings as well as the village board meetings as they come up in the future. Okay. And thank you for your, your professional approach. Um, motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Moves, moved by Mr. Pesar, second by Mr. Campbell. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you everyone. See you in two weeks.